Hello students, welcome to Agile Tech and in this video we are going to be looking at the systems life cycle, okay? That is our chapter 7 in the IGCSE um, test book and we are going to be looking at it today. So I'm just going to um, do a full slide show. Yes, the system life cycle. Now, um, one of the things you need to understand is the reason for the system life cycle is Let's look at a, let's look at a scenario where um, a company or a banking um, is probably using a paper base or an, an electronic system um, for numbers of years, okay, and they want to replace that current system, okay, with prop, with a new one, okay, and after um, numbers of years of of uh, successful operations, they feel need that a lot of things are trending, a lot of things are happening right now that they need to bring in those things that are turning other banks and other um, um, the banking operations into their own organization. This is one of the reasons for the system life cycle because um, for you to be able to um, uh, bring a new system into an organization, there have to be a number of reasons. You have to look at one, um, the, uh, the current system you're using is now obsolete. It's no longer, uh, um, so many things are outdated, so many things are not operational. You have to look at um, um, the changes of law or changes of uh, the nation, um, certain um, legislation and the likes of that. You look at the hardware and software specifications that are now new that needs to also be what you um, to be added. Or it could just be that you want to probably make an upgrade to your organization and, you, and now you're, you're going fully um digital there, there are so many so many so so many reasons uh, why that is involved and that is why um in the system life cycle um this phase is very very important and uh, talking about um reasons for the cycle to be in place now for this to happen for this to actually happen um you you need to um Okay, um, so um, in this lesson objective, by the end of the lesson, for the analysis stage, um, all will be able to identify the analysis of the coin system. Most will be able to describe the four methods used to research the coin system. Some will be able to describe the research method as well as the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so um, we're diving in into the system life cycle. And it has this um, cycle and it's summarized in the analysis, the design, the development and testing, implementation. Um, we have um, implementation, uh, we have documentation, we have um, evaluation and the likes of that. Now, um, it is very important that we know how the cycle operates, okay, from the analysis, the design, development and testing, implementation, documentation, and the evaluation, okay? Because one of the things is, when you have discovered all these problems, it's now obsolete, um, there are new hardware, there are new softwares available, um, the, the law, the legal changing, need to upgrade. When you know all this, it then means that a system analyst needs to be brought in, right, to oversee the whole, um, um, up, uh, the, the, the whole upgrade uh, session of the new system. A system analyst is very, very important because the system analyst is the one that helps to tell you, okay, these are the things that you need for the new upgrade. And one of the first tasks that the system analyst is going to do is what we call analyzing the current system. And once the analysis has been done, he or she can be able to suggest what improvements, um, advantages to you um, that needs to be um, reported or sent to you for you to have a glance through about those uh, uh, advantages or um, improvement that needs to be done. Okay, so this is the waterfall model. We have it from the requirements, the analysis, the design, the codings, the testing and we have it as the acceptance okay 
Now we look at the analysis stage proper. We've seen that the system analysis is now being brought in to oversee the whole upgrade uh, operation and it's going to suggest the improvement that can be made and all these improvements are going to be reported back um, to the owners of the business and once that is done and the owners have agreed, okay fine, uh, this is okay, this is what we need and that has been agreed upon, then the process can now fully um, um, kick off, okay? And one stage is the analysis stage, okay? Because in the analysis stage, we look at um, how well you're able to research the coin system, how well you're able to um, you're able to identify a lot of things. So what are those things in the analysis phase? Let's look at them. We have the input, we have the process and output data are displayed. We have problems with the coin system identify. Um, the input process and output data talks about um, how data are being captured, how it is being processed, and how it is being displayed. You look at the problems with the coin system, how they are identified. You look at the, 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 the coin system you are currently using, what are the issues they are having, and how well you can be able to identify them. You look, you look at the user requirements. User requirement talks about um, what, the, what the users are expecting for um, the new system. Obviously, for every system that is, is having an upgrade, um, take a look at um, the GT Bank, the Access Bank. They are all traceable to user requirements, okay? From in-house or from internal, um, from both internal source and external source. Because they are seeing what other banks are doing and they want their banks as well to also do it. Some will be operating in GT and also have an access. Ah, I can do this in GT, but I cannot do this in access. Why is that? And all these things are, all those feedbacks are very, very important because that is what they take in to be able to ensure that all these issues are probably looked into. Now, number four, we have requirement specifications. The requirement specification talks about limitations and expectations. Okay, are fully described in the analysis phase. What are the requirements? Uh, what are the requirements that we're going to need? Right. We've looked at the, the user requirement. What are the informational the information requirements that we need? What are the information requirements that we need? And also um, adding it to us number five, we also look at the um, identifying the hardware and software that will be needed for the new system with all this stated what then becomes how do the system analysts analyze the coin system to be able to suggest improvement for the new system okay we are talking about the different techniques used to analyze the coin system number one we have observation we have interviews we have questionnaires we have collecting document or what we call examining uh, examination of the existing word document all right in the next one is um observation but before we look at observation there is a need for us to look at each of them both the observations um, interviews questionnaires and collecting document so let's do that now for observation the system analyst will observe the current system to find out, right, the way of working. It's going to analyze the current system to find out the way of what working. And it's, uh, what the system analyst is uh, simply doing in this stage is it's looking at how um, um, the employees are working and uh, he or she is observing the way they operate. He or she is looking at, um, um, is watching the staffs or the personnel right using that coin system to find out how exactly it is working okay now what is the, the advantage for the advantage number one here we see that reliable information right the system analysis is going to obtain what reliable what data okay the informations will not be biased how will the information will not be biased it will not be biased because the system analyst is the one seeing that information seeing how the operation works takes place so the system analysis is getting the first hand knowledge of how the system would operate okay um uh, it is inexpensive in such that because it only involves what the system analyst so you're not, you're not employing anybody else you're not employing anybody else but you're just only employing the system analyst to just carry out what that method okay of course 
uh, if another advantage is all the input and output of the current system are seen the system analyst is seeing those how data is being captured how um, the information are being displayed on the screen for this advantage for this advantage we see that employees may feel uncomfortable and that is the truth employee may feel uncomfortable how would they feel uncomfortable because they feel uncomfortable being watched and may not work in a, they, they may work in a different way because you know they, Obviously, they are, they are watching the way they work, okay? And uh, we see this as a Houghton effect, okay? As a Houghton word effect. Number two is employees may perform differently. Yes, they may po uh, perform differently, especially if um, they perform tasks that uh, contravene the standard uh, procedure of the organization and may not want to do so while they are probably being watched. The next one is interview okay interview analysis would take uh the same analyst will take interviews of people who use the current system for interview it involves a one-on-one -on -one, that interview it involves a one-on-one -on -one word question and what answer session between the system analyst and of course the employees or the users of the current word system of course it's uh, i see interviews as a good method uh, because the, the system analyst will have the chance to probe, to ask more questions, okay, um, and will dive deeply into what specific areas of the word current word system. Now, what are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? The advantages, um, it can, uh, the system analyst can ask open-ended questions, right? Open-ended questions about the current word system. In fact, it, it gives, uh, it allows um, that system analyst to be able to what, to ask what, more questions okay um, about how the current system world works number two questions modifications can be done during interview which is very very common it can be done uh, during interview because the more the step analyst is asking questions the more um the more answers the users of the of the system gives the more the, the system analyst can be able to dive into those areas that is what clarifications okay that's why it's what is very important another advantage we can add to it is that the system analyst can watch the body language sometimes what the the mouth is saying and what the body is saying may be different and uh, he um he similarly may be able to notice that maybe this person don't want to say some things that are probably um um that, that that may lead into uh controversies or the likes of that so it is it, uh, a good opportunity for the system analyst to be able to watch all those um, things okay another advantage is that it gives you um, the opportunity for the personnel to you know to be open right and be honest about the difficulties of the current system disadvantages could be time consuming it is time consuming because you get to um, uh, probably you're going to need more system analysis that is one two um, it, it is it's time consuming because you're going to have to um, question a lot of users or personnel making use of that current system. Which brings me to the next disadvantages, which is what um, expensive because one, you have to employ a lot of system analysts or interviewers that can be able to collect this data. Of course, um, another disadvantage I, I think would be the interviewer can give answers they think the interviewer wants to hear. They just give answers that they want the system analyst uh, to hear and not dive into more deeply or something. They're just scared to say some things that will just put them into problem or whatever. But so they just give answers just for the sake of, okay, yes, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true, it's true, okay? Um, another disadvantage is the, the, the end users cannot remain anonymous. So if they, are, if they are saying something that can be a little bit controversy, their names are properly what documented okay um the next method is the questionnaire now in the questionnaire we see that the system analyst will distribute questionnaires to employees to ask questions or to take opinions about the current system that is what um the question is all about all right it, it talks about distributing okay to um the the users the the personnel using the current system to find out their views of using the current system and to find out um, some uh, how some key tasks are being what, carried out. 
One advantage is it can reach a large audience. And this is true, it can reach a, a large audience and uh, something that will take a lot of time in the interview in the question it gets to reach a large what, audience. It is ever uh, a cheap method. It is a cheap, a cheap, a, a cheap method because it allow, allow for quick analysis of what the data. Right? It's simple. It's a cheap method because you're not spending too much. You just share out those questionnaires. They're going to fill and return to you. And yes, it is very easy to fill. Right? Um, interview the, the the end users can fill it in their own time. Right, and it's not too it's not too ambiguous because it's just um, a yes or no, a check, this and this, and it becomes so easy to fill. Okay, um, disadvantages could be may not be completed by an employee. That is the truth. Okay, um, the returns of the questionnaires can be actually very low, which which is which is a disadvantage because not every employee gets to what complete it. So may do it and leave it incomplete and that becomes what a problem okay sometimes it may not even be returned that's number two right or the return may be very very low right it may not even be returned it, it may not be completed um by the word employee you cannot expand or modify questions that is what disadvantages about the um questionnaire you cannot expand you cannot modify what the questions okay the next one is collecting documents, okay? In collecting documents, we we'll see that the system analyst is going to examine the, the existing document of the coin system and to analyze how data are being captured and how these data are being displayed. In fact, it allows the system analyst to be able to check the files of, of how uh, this system would operate, the manual of how this system would operate and that gives the system analyst an idea okay an idea of the scale of the problem they are having talking about memory size the, the uh, types of input output devices etc etc advantages um the system analyst can be able to obtain critical information yes they can be able to obtain critical critical what information critical information because uh they are examining the original document of how that system was operates okay so it allows information to be obtained uh, which which is of course is not is not possible in any other method there are some things in the system that even the end users or the personnel will not even be aware about okay disadvantages is it is time consuming it is time consuming it is time consuming in the sense that it is uh it takes a lot of time to be able to examine all the documents of the existing system and of course it is very very what costly right because obviously time is going to be needed to go through all of them so here um in the first um phase um the first stage we have um methods of analyzing coin system we have the observation we have the interviews we have the questionnaires and we have collecting documents now we'll be looking at the second phase. Now, for the second phase, um, we'll look at the lesson objective. By the end of the lesson, for the design stage, all will be able to identify what the file and data structures. Most will be able to describe the input formats, data capture um, forms, and um, the RP format, talking about the screen layouts and the report layout. Okay, some will be able to describe the validations word routine all right now for the design phase it is very very important in design phase and uh, we're going to what um we're going to look at it um uh, right away now in the design phase um once the analysis of the existing system as you know um is has fully been recorded okay the system analyst now has you know a clear picture of um this um how a clear picture of the problem of the current word system now we go into design okay so in the design phase we're, we're looking at 
um, col uh, uh, information collected from another phase is now based on what design phase. It is the information that is being collected from that analysis phase, from observations, from interviews, from uh, questionnaires, from collecting documents that will bring about the design phase. Okay, so now in the design phase, we look at um, um, the file structures and data structures. Um, we look at how the design captures forms and screen layout is going to be designed. Design, uh, design report layouts, screen, design screen display, design validation routines, design file structures, talking about the feed length, uh, data type, and etc., etc., etc. Now, in the file structures and data structures, which we're talking about, we're talking about um, for the file structure, we're looking at a database that needs to be created. Um, we're looking at how they need to be stored. And in the file, we're looking at the records it is made up of. And we're, look, we're looking at fields, we're looking at um, primary keys, etc. etc. So we, we have a database that needs to be created. We need to see data types that need to also be what? Be designed. And that brings us to what? Uh, data types okay now what you are seeing here is the design phase right how forms and screen are being displayed now it could be a paper base it could also be an electronic one uh, uh it could also be an electronic uh, storage medium now in the electronic storage medium we see that um obviously data types have to also work be created for that and we have a lot of, quite a number of data types talking about the alphanumeric that uh, talks about combinations of um, characters and numbers and sim uh, uh, characters and numbers. We look at characters, talking about letters. We look at text, talking about strings of letters, talking about boolean, um, yes or no, numeric numbers, and of course there are different there are different types of numeric data. Talking about integer, decimal, um, currency, date and time, etc., etc., etc. Now it is important because in the um, forms or screen design, it should be clear. Whenever you're designing, right, the forms on the screen design should be clear. It should be easily readable. It should use proper spacing, right? Uh, it should use the proper areas for imputing text. It should make it a drop down list. It should use the radio buttons, okay? It should use the check box. And of course, you use the navigation buttons. These are the navigation buttons. These are the videos. Now, for, uh, for the radio buttons, it could be, um, uh, something like um, um, uh, male, um, uh, your gender, are you male or female? You could use the radio buttons for that. Drop down if you're selecting maybe a year group. What year, what year are you? Are you in year seven, year eight, and uh, the likes of that? Text box could be your name and um, um, your uh, your 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 name, um, your age, your you know your parents' um, address, your uh, the likes of that, okay. Your parents' phone number, you can use a textbook for that, okay. So, uh, moving on now for the five structures, it should be properly designed. Talking about if we've talked about the five structure, we will talk about the database that needs to be created, and we'll look at um, um, the files, the records, um, the fee, uh, the primary keys, etc., etc., the data types as well that needs to also be generated. So, we have to create the database and um, clearly defined tables required and relationship between the table. Obviously, you want to create relationship between them. Okay, you have to set primary keys and foreign keys for the tables uh, because when you're talking about the file structure, the data structures, you want to see how the data are being created in the database, how the relationship is being set up, um, the relationship between um, um, different tables, how they are related. You have to look at the types of the, um, data types or the types of data, talking about alphanumeric, um, the tags. Um, the booleans, and uh, we, we, uh, um, we look at the numeric, right, as much as possible. Okay, so here, uh, this is a, this is the design phase. This is this is the design phase here, and um, it's data type here. We can see that, for example, we have customer ID, auto number, um, um, the uh, full name, tags, surname, tags. All these uh, date of birth, of course, can be date and time. Um, could be numbers of children uh, for the parents. Um, also, the data type can be numeric. Receive mails could be boolean, etc., etc. Now, um, 
we will look at the validation routines but before we go into the validation routines right i'm still on this that the need for us to know um the input format talking about the data captures what are the things that are needed and we've talked about it we've talked about it to ensure that uh, it needs to have um we look at it in paper base and we look at it in the computer data type capture form so it could be paper base it could also be a computer data word uh, capture form if it's, if it's a paper base obviously um you want to look at you, you want to look at um having um, a clear title you want to ensure that um, um there's a space where the person is going to um fill in their forms right so it, 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 it has to be clear for the people using that form to know what they are filling um there needs to be the use of text box in the paper in the paper based form um you need to use characters such as the first name surname etc um there should be tick box um like i said for, for for gender are you male or female um of course there should be sufficient uh, sufficient spaces for people to be able to write okay about address um and other information that are needed the fonts and you have to use a, a clear um font size okay and of course if you're using colors the colors have to be um, um so easy to read and not um um you should not um really be color right but it should be something that is well presentable that is for the paper base but for the um computer base you want to use um your screen your screen which this is a computer base on screen to help you uh, complete the form you want to use the you want to make it of the drop down menu right um the drop down menu here talks about where the where there are limited choices so you give the choices like the year of the child year seven year eight year nine year ten year eleven you do uh radio buttons right with just a single click your gender male or female um validations of data is also entered with that there are control buttons like the navigation buttons here you have the double entry data talking about verification rule to check the correct to check if the data entered are what correct okay i feel that um that is very very important to know and that is what really happens that's what really happens in the input format and uh, talking about data capture in paper base and in computer base now for the output phase which is the screen layout then you see something like this with pictures and all the rest uh it makes here yeah, now for this um output format talking about the screen layout and the report layout um it needs to be careful now in, in the database right we have it in such a way that when we are creating our database we have the set of data here um we have the set of data here and we have um, a, a lot of uh, routines that are being put in place to ensure that it makes it easier and that is talking about our forms in the database okay our forms which make it easier for users to be able to enter the data very well and it goes to the data sheet okay it goes to what that data sheet so it, we'll make sure that the size of all the output field is in their correct format um, the instructions are clear and the sections to enter your name the mandatory field is stated um that they need to enter that means if they skip the mandatory field they have to be a kind of validation um, routine that checks to know that okay if it's if it's mandatory it needs to be filled if it's not filled uh, probably you cannot be able to uh print or uh, submit that particular word record okay um ensuring that this full screen is utilized is very very important you can see that the, the whole screen is utilized and of course that the colors and font um in the output are very very what clear now let's look at um the validation routines which is what we want to look at the validation routines very very important for the validation routines now validation techniques i apply to check the data um enter that it means what is specific word criteria now for the present check it ensures data is, is entered and the field is not blank okay it means if the mandatory field like i've said and it's not filled it should not proceed to the next record until that field has been filled 
For the type check, it ensures that the type of data entered is correct. For example, if it's a name, for example, um, your first name should not contain any form of what number, okay? In that in the first name field or in the name field as the case may be. Length check, it ensures that it is not too, too short or too long. For example, it can be stated that in this particular field, I just want only four um, characters to be entered in this field. So if it's more than four, it should be able to prompt what an error word message. Now, in the range check, it ensures data is what in a given range. For example, if the max of students you're given um, from 0 to 100 percent, there shouldn't be any 101, 102, 103, etc. etc. So, it should, the range should be specified so that if uh, um, the end user are using it and they want to give anything outside of it, it should be able to prompt what an error. The format check right, ensures format of data is correct. It ensures that, that the format of data word is correct. Correct in the sense that if you are if you are using a formatting, let's say for example, the format is um, the day has to be first, the month and the year, it should follow this format. It should not be month first, before day and before year. It should follow what this format. The check digit, right, is to check the final digit in the code if they are in their correct word sequence. If it's one, two, three, it should not be two, three, four. Okay, that is very, very what important about um, the validations word routine. Very, very important. All right, we have data verification. Now, in data verification, uh, it will ensure that the data was correctly transferred into the system and what are those verification methods we have visual check visual tech talks about you proofread the data by visually checking the originality or the accuracy of data so you check with what you've entered um to check if there are any spelling errors um they um, um they are not entered correctly or maybe um the person was supposed to write this the person wrote this but it could fit into the um validation routine but data verification is important because um yes why it is a name it's it could not be spelled it, it may not be spelled correctly and that's why the individual check double entry means we are entering data twice to ensure data is correct and usually for passwords so that's why sometimes when they tell you enter your password they, they tell you they tell, enter your password they tell you see, we enter the password again because they want to show they want to check if um what you're entering matches what has been entered before now we are done with that. In the next um, stage, we are looking at development and testing. And we are looking at the lesson objective. All will be able to describe the need for testing. Most will be able to describe test designs and test strategies. And some will be able to describe the test plan, test data. And of course, we are also going to look at the live um, data as well okay for development and testing um we are going to um create and develop what the design um, system now in design stage we put all those things how what are the things that are needed in design stage and once all those things have, have, been, have been put in place the next phase right now is towards to go ahead in developing what that system and once that system has been developed, there are going to be some testing to ensure that the system is actually working to the expectation, okay? To the standard that is what required. So we have development and testing, and we'll create and develop the design system. We're going to divide the whole system into modules. We're going to create five structures. We're going to create database. We're going to apply the validation uh, techniques. We're going to create user interface. We're going to link and merge the modules to make a single unit in a nutshell these are the things we'll be doing in development and testing we'll create everything divide them into modules when 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 we, when we when we talk about modules we're talking about each acting as a single unit right software is normally often developed into what modular forms okay and it will allow them to be broken into smaller parts okay that smaller part is what we call the model right and most of most of the time they could be developed separately by programmers one will develop the database so develop the interface 
this one will, will create validation routines etc etc this will uh, design the file structures and uh, the likes of that that is why when they are developed separately they also need to be tested separately before being linked or merged together to make a single word unit now before developing the software you need test strategies okay test strategies, test strategies are very very important which is what we are talking about right because um, once the development of each of the models is complete the whole system needs to be tested what as a whole right and once those testings um, or each of those models work satisfactorily then they're all put together um, there's also need to be data testing because um, we can look at data clashes incompatibility and all this is going to lead to what improve input and output um, validations verification methods and of course everything will be fully tested everything will not be tested again okay so before um, developing the software we're going to need what the test strategies we'll decide which part of the software function need to be tested we draw up what a test plan okay well we we'll drop a test plan okay and all these test strategies test plan there's actually the need for testing and why are we testing would we test them because the system contains files uh, and the five structures we need to be finalized okay and then we need to test to see if the system is working correctly okay and to see um how the user interface operates and the likes of that okay all right now the test plan talks about um a list of the tests that will be uh, performed um the test the data to be used in the test the expected outcomes and of course um purpose of each particular uh, particular test the purpose of each of the particular tests you're performing you see that what what i tell that is going to be performed um what set of data are we going to use for the test and uh, what are the outcomes are we going to see the expected outcome um actual results any action that will be taken i will see the purpose of each of those word, particular word test now one way we can actually carry it out is to what we call the different types of tests okay and they are used to ensure the expected outcome we have the first one is what we have um, the normal um, we have the abnormal and we have the extreme test now for the normal test right the, uh, the data is within the acceptable word um, is within the range talking about that they are acceptable and they are what they are valid and they have what an expected what outcome for example this is a normal in the max of 0 to 100 the normal could be what um 85 56 74 um 34 these are normal right but for the abnormal these are data that are outside the boundary okay they are beyond the limits okay and for example it could be any value less than 100 any value greater than 100 um it could be letters or other numeric data no integers what um values as well so in, in the case of um the abnormal we are having minus five one one because they are outside they are beyond the limit of what acceptability for extreme right they are at the limit of what acceptability or at the boundaries of the limit okay they are the boundaries of what the limit okay for example uh for extreme it could just be um um zero or what hundred for zero to, uh, zero or hundred if it's one to hundred we have one or hundred and they just have two end values the first and the last okay now in development and testing we have what we call the unit testing now we are going to test them individually okay this is the fourth type of testing that is the word carried out in the software testing life cycle and is generally executed by what the developer now the goal of the unit testing is to test to test each unit separately and ensure that each unit is working as expected now for the model one 
we are going to modify if any errors are found. We we'll test the first module and we we'll test the second module. We we'll modify if any errors are found. We we'll test the third module and we are going to modify if any errors are found. The next one is the integration testing. Now, integration testing is a type of testing to check if the different models that have now been put together are working as expected after bringing all of them words together. It checks the overall flow of the application and after the integration of different models. For example, model 1, model A, model B are now being integrated together and we are going to test all of them. Now that is the end of um, development and testing. We are going into implementation stage. Now for the lesson of objective, all will be able to identify the method used in changeover. Most will be able to describe the design of implementation method and some will be able to what, describe the advantages and disadvantages of the method. Okay? So, um, we are going to look at that right away. Now, for the implementation stage, right, once the system is fully tested, the next thing is to implement it. Is to implement it. Now, there's a need to train staffs on the new system. After implementing, you need to train them. Okay? And before looking at all these phases, there's a need to look at how we transfer the files to the system. Are we scanning? Are we doing it manually? Are we keying manually? Are we downloading to a different database? And we're going to see the changeover of these systems, of new systems as we're looking into right now. The first one is the diet changeover. Now, in the diet changeover, the existing system is stopped and replaced by the new system immediately. That is, that is the design in, um, implementation of the direct changeover, okay? Um, the old system is stopped, okay? And the new system is introduced immediately. Now, the data that was imputed into a system is now transferred into the new system. It has advantage and disadvantage. Now, for the advantage, we see that less chance of errors as the system already tested, okay? The costs are reduced as there is no data word. Um, duplication talking about the benefit are immediately okay. Um, uh, the costs are reduced, no du duplicate data, there's only to pay staffs, uh, so the costs are being reduced as well. Uh, because only one system is fully uh, operational, so there's no need to bring in or pay two set of staffs um, to use the system. All you have to do is to train the current one you have. Disadvantages could be if the new system fails then old system is no longer available that could be disastrous okay it can be very catastrophic um it can be very very disastrous because if the new if the new system has an issue it then means your business will have to be on a standstill okay and another disadvantage could be the time is ne time needed to train the staff because you have to train the staff on how to carry out this new system which could be time consuming okay the next one is power running okay now in the power running we see that um, the, the, ex, the current system and the new system work together for a period of time both the old and new work for a period of time until the new system fully work takes over now this is um, a very strenuous process because data is imputed into both systems while they are running at the same time okay while they are running at the same time okay so um for the advantage if the new system fails your system is still what available okay employees can be trained gradually why the system is operational because um it could be face training in such a way that since the two systems are working you could take your time in training um or probably from the heads and you know various heads before going down it's easier because there's a there is a gradual process in the training but for disadvantages okay it needs more employees and that will increase your cost as well and the tax is going to be what duplicated right 
it's going and which is more time consuming because um, data needs to be transferred or entered into what the two systems in the phase implementation the system is gradually introduced right um, when part of the new systems are working at a satisfactory level then more elements of the system are phased in what we're talking about they are being introduced in modules okay so when the new systems are uh, when this particular um, uh, module is working they can bring it in bring this particular hardware in gradually gradually until more elements of the system are being what phased in so the new system are gradually introduced okay and we see part of them working at once um each of them is working at satisfactory level they are being what phased in okay advantage is that if part of the system does not meet any criteria you can go backward to the old system that is a good advantage and of course um um disadvantage could be time consuming and it requires what more training session okay and of course um it's time consuming um because each part needs to be fully evaluated before making any further changes toward the system the other one is pilot running now in the pilot running the new system is piloted talking about it is being placed in one section of the organization or placed in one department of the organization so if the if the piloting phase is successful in that organization it is then implemented across all the department now for the advantage is that if the new system does not meet any criteria it is only one department that is affected and not every other word department that are affected um, you can only be able to train only one department then others train and then they can train others so you you train only one department and others can be able to what train for organizations that have branches it is a very very easy method because you could just do it in one branch one branch and then you can now get those staff to train other what people disadvantage could be time consuming and it is time consuming um because you get to uh um uh, um you get to train um not just one department but um uh, data in that department also is also entered uh, the data also and uh, if there's any issue any issue in that particular department then there's not going to be any form of oppression so it takes it is actually what um time what consuming could be delayed if modification what required okay it's going to be delayed if modification if modifications are what are required okay so this brings this brings us to the end of um implementation and the next stage is what we call the documentation stage now in the lesson objective we see that all will be able to identify the types of documentation most will be able to describe the user documentation some will be able to describe the technical word documentation all right so let's look at documentation there are two types of documentation that are produced during the system life cycle we have user documentation okay and the user documentation is um it helps to help users to learn how to use the software or system okay um for technical documentation it helps programmer the user it helps the user for technical it helps programmer or the system analyst to make what improvement to the system or to be able to repair or maintain what the system for either documentation we look at um, the list of minimum hardware and software are required to use the system that's what is there in documentation and it's both is it is both in um, the user documentation and technical documentation how to install the system how to start or stop the system how to use the feature of the system screenshot showing the system in typical use um, examples of input and output okay examples of input and output uh, we look at explanations of any error message that might be shown we look at the troubleshooting guide 
for the input and output is also both for the user and technical documentation frequently what as questions okay for validation routines um for validation routines um uh, that is uh that is especially for the technical what um documentation but another thing that we could be missing here could be um how we can add delete or we can actually amend records in the user documentation we'll see how we can add we'll see how we can delete we'll see how we can be able to modify that um we'll see um um error message meaning of error message which is also in the technical documentation um another thing could be um limitation of the system which could which is also in the technical word documentation okay i'm just looking at um, purpose of the system or program and software package which is also in the technical documentation because most of the time you might be given a, a kind of objective question and they list out those um those features of the documentation they ask you this technical or user or both okay now for the technical documentation we look at the list of minimum hardware and software required to use the system we look at the purpose of the system which is also in the um the the first one is also part of the user the second one is also part of the user the limitation of the system is also part of the user document we look at the system flowchart <coughs> program coding and annotations we look at the list of variable used and purpose of variable we look at the file structure talking about your table your links data fields and data types look at the validation routines your present check your format check um um and uh, uh, all those checks that helps you to digit checks um length check range checks and the likes of that um we look at the memory the memory requirement as well known box in the system um we look at um things i've not mentioned here i just want to add to it uh many of error message which is also in the user documentation um we look at um um i think that is all the validation rules of additional routine have also been mentioned and i think that's all um so please it's important that you know um the similarities of those um, um document documents that will be in both user and technical in the last stage we look at the evalu evaluation stage and in the evaluation stage we are looking at lesson objective i will be able to identify some of the things to be considered when evaluating how well the new system has worked okay most will be able to describe some results from the evaluations that may lead to updates of hardware and softwares okay so we're going, we're going to look at that right away now for the evaluations we look at the final stage of the system what life cycle we look at um, um how we can refer back to the requirements specifications to see whether the new system has been resolved has resolved the issues of the previous system and has met the requirements stated in design um specifically what we are doing is we are carrying out some evaluations and um, maintenance as well and we'll look at the feature of some of the things we are going to consider when we are looking at those evaluations and one of them is we can compare the, the, the final solution with the original tax requirement two we can identify the limitations and necessary improvement three we can evaluate the user's response okay we can compare test results from the new system with that of the old old system we can compare the performance of the new system with that of the old system um we can observe the users performing set tasks and we'll compare it to the old system we can look at the time taking it yeah, the time taking to complete a task uh, with that of the old system and uh, we can also give out questionnaires to gather what um response about the the features of the new system okay and um once those things are done these evaluations may eventually uh lead to what updates of hardware update of what softwares basically because of feedback from users um um and of course um any what changes 
um, in the hardware and software. Okay, so looking at maintenance, maintenance is a continual process and it takes place throughout the system operational life cycle. We have the error correction or the corrective maintenance, talking about um, complex software goes wrong sometimes and the errors are called bugs in the software and we have to find and fix those bugs. We look at um, added functionality, talking about adaptive maintenance and this um, this changes in any organization and the original problem that the system was built for may have what been altered. So they need for actually they need to actually make some maintenance to that. Okay, and we look at performance improvement. Talking about uh, perfective maintenance, organization really want to speed up processes and make them more efficient. Example, increase in the numbers of what products being what handled. If it's used to serve one or 10 people they want to see how you can serve 20 people etc etc in conclusion we see that um the first thing we do whenever we want to develop a new system is the analysis and then we look at the design phase things that will be needed in the design phase we look at the file structure look at the validation routines um uh, we look at the input and output and then we look at development and testing how we can develop how we look at the test plan test strategies um uh, um, the need for testing, etc., etc. Look at the implementation, how we're implementing it, and um, what, the first one is training of the staff, how we can find our data, um, then again, how is the changeover going to look like? Is it direct, pilot, etc., etc.? And then we look at documentation, documentation for users, how they can use the system, for technical, how the programmers or system analysis are going to use the system for improvement and so on and finally evaluation we're going to cut evaluations make it compare comparison between the new system and the old system and the cycle goes on and on and on and on and on so thank you very much for um watching this and please do want well to subscribe to this youtube channel for more igcsc um uh, both practical and theoretical word videos